At Skyhoy, we are continuously adding support for new devices. All the time, our software engineers are working to implement cameras and video switchers and routers and so forth. Now, we also improve existing support. And one of the things we support is Panasonic cameras like the EVA 1 camera or the CX350. These two cameras, they are sharing the same protocol. So many of the things that you find in, in these cameras are the same. Some things are only available in an EVA 1. But one thing that has been uh, true so far is that you could only operate with one camera at a time. But now we have added multi-camera support in this device core. So if you have an RCP like this one, it's likely that you want to operate only one camera at a time because the joystick is in a fixed position and so forth. And that's what this form factor is really for. But in this video, we'll explore how the Colorfly, which is another uh, shading surface from Skyhoy can work with these cameras. So the Colorfly is right here in front of me and you immediately notice the bottom row of buttons here which has camera 1 and camera 2 selector. Now uh, this is even the 2020 model of the Colorfly so we added this place on the lower row of buttons, making this a perfect surface, not only for camera control, but even for audio control, because it's so flexible when you don't have to uh, have fixed printed labels on your controllers. But let's look at how this works with these two cameras. So we have an EVA 1 camera here. We have CX350 over here. And as I said, they are sharing a lot of parameters. So changing between these two cameras on the Colorfly is simply a matter of pushing this button and now I'm at camera 2, which is the uh, CX350. Now I'm back at the EVA 1 camera. Now in each case, you see all the settings in the displays are going to be picked up from each camera. So you can see how changes happen up here when I'm changing from one to the other camera. So we have actually videos that goes in depth with all the things you can adjust in these cameras. But I want to recap what is hidden inside this control surface because it's really powerful. And of course, one of the main things you want to do is to adjust the iris. So let's look at how that works. So now we at the EVA1 camera and you see the motorized fader here allows me to operate the iris of the camera. So um, I say motorized, yes, because the, the cool thing is uh, if I touch the camera's uh, iris style here, you can see that I can adjust iris on the camera and the fader is moving along on the color fly. You see that as I'm changing the iris on the camera. So this means that there's full duplex correspondence between the camera and the controller uh, so that they are always in sync, which is great. Now, if I go over here, I have similar uh, control of the um, uh, CX350. And this is how you basically go forth and back between the two operating the faders here. Now, uh, by the way, these faders are always controlling each of the cameras, just to make sure, because the selector here is for all the additional settings that you find on this surface. And let's go into depth with some of those. Now, um, if we look at this row of button, it's like a, a paging selector for menus. And when I change, you see that it changes the actions up here on the top row, okay? And in fact, there are so many parameters in the EVA1 and the CX350 that we needed to do uh, uh, to have multiple layers of this. So watch out what's happening. As I press the black button once, you see pedestal RGB and uh, we have uh, pedestal M over here, master uh, pedestal. Um, by the way, master pedestal is the same as master black and uh, master black is uh, located for each channel on the knobs just above the faders. Okay, but when I press this a second time, you see that I get to master knee enable, master knee point, slope and chroma settings. So this is essentially toggling forth and back between those two uh, black level related settings. Now I go to matrix and you see we have linear matrix enable. So I can turn this on and off here and it affects availability of um, these uh, parameters over here. When I'm pressing this, then I'm, I'm getting a different uh, dimension here. It is currently RB and now it's RG on this knob here. If I go to exposure mode, we have variable shutter on, uh, on off here you can see. And um, when I turn it off, by the way, these are blocked out. You can see that by the little uh, forbidden icon. Now I have a shutter mode uh, if it's in, in seconds or degrees and that obviously affects the display over here. ND filter can be set on this knob here. 
you can see the, the effect on the camera as well. So uh, if I press the second time, I have uh, frame rate, uh, variable frame rate, enable, disable, exposure index, master gain, and now I'm back to the standard. So uh, we can go on white balance and uh, detail. Uh, I'm toggling between those two settings here. I'm toggling between gamma related settings on this one. And then now we come to a special button, the color button. It does something a little different. Now it enables this row of buttons for um, the, the deep down color uh, parameters in the Panasonic camera. I don't know exactly. Um, I mean, it's, it's really like 32 dimensions you can adjust in this camera if you really want to go crazy. So this is why you need to enable it first. And when that's done, you have these buttons to do sub-paging of those settings, which are now mapped to all eight encoders on the top of the interface. So just see how uh, the label is changing. So if you know exactly what P7PH means, and um, face and saturation over here for P7, this is what you get when you are in bank number four. But if you go to color correction bank three, then you have P3, P4, P5, P6, and so forth. If we go back to the first bank, we have uh, red, green, blue, face, and saturation. So for the, those of you guys who want to use that dimension of the color corrector, you see those settings are available from the, the sixth page on the menu, and then you enable it down here. Actually, we have even more levels in the menu because the cameras have so many features. So if we go into this menu here, you see we have zoom and focus. And if I press this button, um, I have a zoom up here, a creep zoom. I can set a creep zoom. I have a step based zoom, zoom speed and fine zoom up here. And you can do the same for focus, creep focus, step focus, speed focus and fine focus over here. Now, uh, going to the menu is interesting because um, although we do support all the settings in these cameras, you can still access the menu from the controller. So just see what's happening here. If I go to, um, uh, if I enable the menu here, you can see I'm, I'm able to, um, on this one, I can, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, okay, I have it turned on already, right? So I can, Oh, is it not? No, no, no. Okay, like this. You see, I'm currently in the menu. It is on the SDI output, so you see it on the camera right now, and you can see how I'm able to navigate into these settings and do changes if I want, but now I just want to go back again. All I wanted to, to show you is that I'm able to access the menu and navigate it from the controller, and you can enable, disable it on the SDI and HDMI outputs and so forth. Before we end the video, let's look at what is in the final menu, the setup menu right here. Now, there we have auto iris on and off, we have bars on and off and so forth, but these are all protected by a shift key because we don't want people to accidentally enable these features. Therefore, we basically enable access to them by pressing this button and now you have access to auto iris. If I enable that it is likely that we'll see this fader move because the moment that we enable auto iris and the camera finds the iris it's going to move the fader. Again you see it is a duplex communication with the camera. We get all the information back we need to give you a, a real-time realistic uh, reflection of the camera settings on the fader. Then we have bars on off. Uh, you see that on the output there. You have uh, ability to use this as a four-way button to go forth and back between different color scenes. And then we have red tally on off. I see a little LED right down there. So, uh, well, it's not like a Skahoy tally light. You really want a bigger lamp if, if uh, it's supposed to make sense for your talent in front of the camera. But uh, we are able to control tally on, on the camera. So uh, we have access to that parameter as well. And if I had a memory card in the camera, I could start and stop recording on this one. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Colorfly in multi-camera mode working with the EVA-1 and the CX350 cameras from Panasonic.